Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit and only Him, nobody else, the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone can reveal to you, to us, the will of God, the kingdom of God. If He doesn't do it, Nobody else will. Nobody else. And those who understand, those who receive the kingdom of God, are the chosen ones. And these chosen ones, for sure, become flame of fire. They become a flame of fire, singular, which means they become one with the Spirit of God. And therefore, by default, they have to be a fountain springing up for all eternity. A fountain springing up into everlasting life. This living water for all eternity. Let me explain to you. Actually, you might have understood in the message that we preached to the pastors, and it's there, very clear, at least to me. I'm not sure if you understood the message. If you didn't understand it well, you can see at least that when a person enters the church, receives God's blessings, divine healing, deliverance from unclean spirits and evil spirits. They are free from the messy life, the addictions and sleeping around and lies. They are delivered from all these things. When a person receives blessings, it does not necessarily mean that they entered the kingdom of God. They received the blessings but it does not mean that they entered the kingdom of God. And unfortunately, many people remain in church, in churches, including the universal church of the kingdom of God, and they are very grateful to Jesus for what he did in their life, in the physical aspect, healing, deliverance, etc., as I mentioned. So they are very grateful. They are there in the church, Years and years and years, 10, 15, 30, 50, 100, 200 years. But it does not mean that they entered the kingdom of God. Pay attention. Pay close attention. A person only enters the kingdom of God when they are chosen and sealed with the Holy Spirit. The person only enters the kingdom of God when they repent from their sins. Oh wow, I was living this terrible life, so messy and so on, but Jesus delivered me. First, he delivered my soul from the prison of sin. He delivered me. So the person bitterly repent from everything that they did up until that moment. And then they are baptized in water to bury that sinful nature, that body of sin. And then when this happens in this, in this order, in this protocol, then heavens are open to welcome this person into God's kingdom, into the kingdom of God, and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. So first, repentance, and then afterwards, it's the burial, which is the water baptism, to bury the old nature, and thirdly comes the baptism with the Holy Spirit. This is the natural order. 
of course, we are not the ones who impose such order. It's God. There are people who are baptized with the Holy Spirit before being baptized in water. And this, obviously, God allows it to happen because it's His will. This happened when the Apostle Paul asked the disciples, the disciples of John, have you received the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, we haven't even heard about the existence of the Holy Spirit. So they had no information at all about the Holy Spirit. So Peter baptized them, he laid hands on them, and they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, rather. They received the Holy Spirit straight away with the laying on of hands from Paul. And then they got baptized in water. Jesus said like this, pay attention. But if I cast out, if I cast out demons with the finger of God, with the finger of God, Surely, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Which means that Jesus cast out demons, he heals the sick, he delivers the oppressed, he performs miracles in your life. This is a sign that the kingdom of God has come upon you. It doesn't necessarily mean that you entered the kingdom of God. It means that now you have conditions to accept, to surrender your life, to repent, to get baptized in water, to receive the Holy Spirit, to become a new person. This only depends on you, because what God does, it's what He does, but there are things that only we can do. He's not going to do it. God is not going to bend our will. No, our will is sovereign. That's what I believe. That's what I understand when God created Adam and Eve and gave them the right, the privilege to choose either to obey or to disobey His voice, His word. So when we obey, then the consequences are the blessings of God, the kingdom of God. So Jesus said, if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. However, it has come upon you, but you must enter it. For example, I really like the example of the ten lepers. Those ten men had faith to be healed. All ten of them were healed. However, after they were healed, only one was left. Only one entered the kingdom of God. We can put it this way. Because he came back to acknowledge Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And Jesus, when he saw him, he said, Where are the others? the other nine who were with you. And he continued saying, Go, your faith has made you well. So he was saved. That one was saved. Why? Because the faith he had, this faith made him surrender and recognize the Lord Jesus as the only Lord and Savior of his life. Of his life. So, dear friends, this is what I worry a lot, but a whole lot indeed. It's what makes me feel uncomfortable. I feel, as the Holy Text says, the birth pangs, as Paul said, I feel birth pangs until people are born again, are baptized with the Holy Spirit. But to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, they first have to repent. And I will speak more about repentance 
in these following days because it is fundamental. It's the first commandment Jesus gave. Repent. The first word he said to everyone. And John the Baptist was there in the desert by the Jordan River. And many people would come from Judea, from Jerusalem especially, to be baptized by him. And he would tell them, repent, repent, repent. So first, there has to be repentance. Many people have been seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they have not repented from their past. And I repeat, repentance is not a remorse. Repentance is not a feeling. It's not a, a sensation of, of a feeling of discomfort because of your past. No. It's when the person forsakes, they abandon their past fully. They turn their back on it and they enter the kingdom of God, which means they submit to the governing of the Holy Spirit. When the person does that, then they are baptized in water. The water baptism is then valid and consequently heavens are open to welcome that person into the kingdom of God. Did you understand, dear friends? Read, please, carefully this text. Check there with the example of the ten lepers. They were all healed. Can you imagine? Nowadays, those who have leprosy are condemned. They are confounded to a hospital. They cannot walk freely. Imagine back then that there was nothing to soothe their pain, to alleviate their misery. They couldn't even enter the town. They would have to be isolated when, when the sister of Moses contracted leprosy. She had to be isolated, completely isolated from everything and everyone because she had done, she had rebelled against her brother who was the spiritual leader of hers. So there are many leprous people within the churches. They are lepers, which means lepers in their soul, not in the body. The body was healed, but the soul was not. And if the soul was not healed, then how can they receive the Holy Spirit? When the Holy Spirit comes, it comes upon a person who is repentant, a person who abandoned sin. And then, yes, the heaven is open to welcome that person. So you see many people inside of the churches living in the church, even doing the work of God. Jesus said, in those days, you say, oh, but we healed the sick, we delivered the oppressed, we've done many wonders. Jesus will say, I will declare to them, I never knew you, never knew you. So it's important for you to evaluate yourself, to evaluate yourself, to make sure, because... Perhaps you are even preparing yourself now to go to church, putting on your uniform, ironing your assistant's uniform. You are a pastor, a bishop, whatever. It doesn't matter the. It doesn't matter the title that you have in the church. What matters is your heart. If it's not healed, if your soul hasn't been healed, unfortunately, you will be. One more out of the nine lepers that was healed, but went, went away. They left. Perhaps you didn't leave. You are in church 20, 30 years, but your soul is still thirsty, still with leprosy. And that's why you even 
are envious of those who are baptized with the Holy Spirit. You are envious. You see everyone with malice. And you gossip. You are inside of the church gossiping. You have malicious eyes towards people. Why? Oh, but I'm an assist. I'm this, I'm that. It doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. You haven't entered the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has come upon you, but you didn't enter it. You were left outside. Why? Because you prioritized your will. That is it. When a person enters the kingdom of God, they prioritize God's will in their life. When they are outside of the church, outside of the kingdom of God, they are, let's say, inside of the institution called church, the denomination you are a part of, including the universal church. You are in the church. You are a pastor, an assistant, a pastor's wife, a bishop's wife. You are a bishop, whatever. But you didn't enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is still outside. You were, rather, left outside. The kingdom of God has come to you, but you remained outside. And you need to enter it. Jesus said, I am the door. The gate is narrow. The path is narrow. But the door is open. If the person doesn't answer, there is nothing I can do. I can't go there, grab them by their neck, and force them into God's kingdom. No, God cannot do that. He convinces the Holy Spirit when He comes, He convinces us. And when He doesn't come, He convinces people from their sins. If they do not repent, He cannot do anything. If I make a mistake, I sin, the Holy Spirit immediately starts acting and convinces me my conscience is heavy the first thing my conscience hurts me so i feel uncomfortable i don't have peace i don't have tranquility i go to church receive blessings but in my soul there is still that bad conscience that pain that leprosy i mean What's the point of you belonging to a human institution called church, but not belong to the kingdom of God? Which means you did not enter the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is spiritual. The kingdom of God here on earth is spiritual. When you enter the church, you enter an institution that is physical, human. However, the kingdom of God is only available to those who enter it through the door, which is Jesus. So it's pointless for you to be healed externally, but inwardly, in your soul, they sin, you still have the thoughts, or you remember your sins, rather, and you still laugh, and you still feel a bit of pleasure in them. When you should cry, God doesn't allow that. When a person dies to the world, when their soul dies to this world, then they want to do God's will, they get sad when they think of their past because they look ahead, they look forward. The past does not exist, it's over. They remain steadfast in the faith, with the certainty, with their conscience at peace, clean, I mean, they have peace within them. So they will remain in the faith because they become one with the Holy Spirit. They become one with the fire, the flame of fire. Did you understand, dear friend? So when you see a brethren making mistakes, a bad broad misbehaving it's a a bad broad right it's the composition of good a broad someone who is good but is doing bad it's a connection between good and evil so we call him a bad broad so if you are a bad broad or a bad sister meaning you are someone who are in the church 
in the institutional church, but you didn't enter the kingdom of heaven, then you are outside of the kingdom of God. You are outside, just like the nine lepers who were healed, they were blessed, but they continued outside of the kingdom of God. Jesus said, if I cast out demons with the finger of God, in other words, if I perform miracles in your life, if I restore your family, I restore your marriage, if I remove addictions, any sort of addiction, if I heal you, it's with the finger of God, with God's power. For sure, certainly, the kingdom of God has come upon you because there are many sick people who were not healed. But they are as far away as you who were healed, but your soul is still ill. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God opened its doors for you, but you didn't enter. You didn't want to submit your will to the will of God's kingdom or to the governing of the kingdom of God, which is the Holy Spirit. So the church of the Lord Jesus, the blameless church, the pure church, the church that the devil cannot, the, the church which the gates of Hades cannot prevail against, it's pointless for the gates of Hades to be locked, closed, preventing people from going out. But when the kingdom of God comes near them, the gates of Hades are open and they are released because Jesus paid the price for these people who surrender, they submit their will, their desires, their, their future, their dreams, their personal dreams, their personal projects. They surrender everything to the Lord Holy Spirit, who is the Lord Jesus in spirit. Dear friends, I think that I was very clear here, but it's all pointless if you understood me, you understood the Word of God, but you continue thinking the way that you did before you were healed physically, before you were delivered physically. If you didn't enter the kingdom of God and you continue this way, you are going to be left outside of the kingdom of heaven. That's what I believe in. Tomorrow we shall be back here. May God bless you. And I see you then in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.